on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And they, as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them that which was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They were kept from recognizing him. Do you ever feel like God is hiding from you? The walk to Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, I don't know, what do you think? 20 minute walk, 20 minute pace per mile? Who knows, maybe slower if you're having a conversation about some deep things and, you know, stop from time to time and clarify a few things. What do you think that took a couple hours? Maybe three hours? I don't know. A few hours, 
to walk along with this stranger, this man that you don't recognize yet, that you've spent a few years with. Was this a few hours that summed up what was being demonstrated to them over the last few years? Sometimes I wonder if Mary Magdalene and the other women with her as they approached the tomb, if they were just there to grieve. Just to grieve the fact that their friend, their teacher, was dead. only to find an empty tomb. The confusion that they must have been experiencing, the thrilling hope that must have burst inside of them, and also the thought that it might have been an empty hope. It was early in the morning when they came to visit the tomb some say maybe even the middle of the night. What was on their mind? And as they went to go share with some of the other followers of Jesus, as, as some of the young men heard the news that maybe Jesus was alive again, They weren't sure if they believed it or not. And then they go to the tomb. They run to the tomb. Only to find it empty. And not see Jesus. Was there disappointment? Was there hope? Were there thoughts of teachings that Jesus had spoken to them about this very thing? Were there scripture references that rushed their mind? Was there shame for Was there shame for leaving Jesus when he was in the midst of his darkest time. It's interesting, the town name, Emmaus. Little is known about this town or the meaning of its name or if that even matters. I couldn't help but feel the connection between the word Emmaus and Emmanuel. Emmanuel meaning God with us. Having this same beginning of a name. Emmanuel and Emmaus. The, the key difference being the ending, of course. More specifically, the difference being that the end of this word Emmaus doesn't have the L, the E-L that's typically associated with one of the names of God or kind of a generic name of God. So Emmanuel, it's God with us, the L being God. So this beginning, this Emma, having something to do with presence, being with. And so on the road to Emmaus, there is, there is this presence with but not the knowledge of it being God. A 
I wonder how many times we are walking in the midst of hiddenness and darkness. If we would realize that God is with us, even then. The seven mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus, this extended walk in hiddenness, only to find out that the withness was there the whole time. God spent time with these followers. God spends time with us in the midst of hiddenness and we're never the same. One of my teachers and friends asked the question, will we resist or will we allow this disruption and will we grow up in the process what do you think when so much is stopped now and there's so much unknown of the future will we be fully present in this time of hiddenness, when we do not know so many things. The earliest followers of Jesus knew this hiddenness in this moment, this, this walk in the darkness, or at least this walk in this unknowing, actively being hidden from what was right in front of them, the, the identity of their friend, the identity of their Lord. They didn't recognize Jesus in his resurrected form. They didn't recognize God as they walked along the road with him. I, I find it quite funny that they asked him, are you the only one that doesn't know what happened to Jesus over the past few days? <laughs> Jesus could have said, I'm the only one who does know. <laughs> you see, because they didn't really understand the suffering that he went through. Jesus experienced this in a very isolated, lonely way. Jesus' redemption of the world was experienced in the midst of his own isolation. I wonder if we want to encounter some light, if we would be willing to take a few hours and walk in the darkness to really be in the darkness to be reminded of the suffering of the Messiah. Maybe they didn't recognize Jesus because maybe we look different after resurrection. Maybe there's something about suffering that transforms us. Like one of my dear friends says, the, the darkness is where the roots are established. Right? Under the ground, in the dirt, in the dark places, when we don't even really know what will come next, that's where the roots are established. And 
my sisters and my brothers, may we experience the transformation that comes through dark times. And may we be and look different when the light returns. What you've carried here